so good morning and welcome back and uh, today we'll see how we have to measure iron losses in a ma- in a material uh, the material uh, using uh, a new mit- new uh, thing that is called lloyd fisher square uh, using the watt meter method so watt meter method is actually the test testing uh, uh, setup we'll be using that in that the specimen or the or the core material or the magnetic material <coughs> or the core material which can be an iron uh, piece or something else is made uh, in the form of strips or sheets are assembled like square and that square is named as a lloyd fisher square and uh, that that lloyd fisher square is actually taken as a specimen which is included in the test setup and the uh, iron losses in that uh, sh- strip or sheet it can be easily found out by uh, by the wattmeter method so this is the outline of today's le- lecture so iron losses we know that in all, in all electrical machines or all electrical apparatus uh, where we have uh, windings or the, when when the windings uh, act as electromagnets the magnetic path the major magnetic path is the iron core so this iron core even though it is laminated uh even though they are stacked up uh even though they are well insulated between the stacks still they suffer from losses and that losses are called iron loss the losses happening in iron so one is the electrical losses inside the iron that is called the eddy current losses and the other is the magnetic losses inside the iron that is called the hysteresis losses so there are two types of losses mainly Uh, when we say uh, iron losses that is eddy current loss and uh, hysteresis loss and uh, i need not explain uh, these two things because you might be knowing the the iron losses actual as, as well as eddy current losses iron losses as we know that uh, even though it is laminated still uh, some circulating current will be flowing through the iron piece and they are in the form of eddies and that is why this uh, this is called eddy current loss so this eddy current loss will cause i square r loss and uh, they will actually cause heat loss also i square r into t losses so such things are called as uh, eddy current losses and uh, then we we know what is hysteresis loss hysteresis uh, curve we have uh, plotted and hysteresis loop also we have learned and uh, we always um, uh, pointed that uh the magnetic materials can be classified into uh, two categories mainly according to the area of the hysteresis loop that is uh, hard mag- magnetic materials and soft magnetic materials so hard magnetic materials have large area included by the hysteresis loop whereas soft magnetic materials have very small uh, area included by the hysteresis loop so in the point of view of electrical machines while we select a- iron materials or where when we select magnetic materials we always go for or we always prefer soft magnetic materials why soft magnetic materials will have less area included by the hysteresis loop why such a thing see thing is that uh, for for if the hysteresis loop or the area included by the hysteresis loop is very small then the thing is that it will be very easy to magnetize and demagnetize so a material which is very easy to magnetize and demagnetize obviously have a uh, very small area included by the hysteresis loop so we have to spend less energy to magnetize as well as demagnetize if suppose we take so much of energy to magnetize and so much of energy to demagnetize then that is a waste of energy so that waste of energy is actually included in the hysteresis loop so all these things accumulated we have the iron losses the iron losses can be measured using the watt meter method and the specimen is arranged in the form of a lloyd fisher square and you can see on the screen uh, the diagram i'm not that much good in drawing and that is why uh, the the thing is not that much neat okay sorry for that i apologize for that for that and uh, i'll just explain what is that lloyd fisher square so i told that <coughs> uh, there are uh, the, the, so the specimen is actually the uh, is made in the form of sheets or strips the specimen can be iron material which is the probably the uh, most commonly used material material for manufacturing core and they are made in the form of strip or sheets so that that strips or sheets are placed inside inside a magnetizing coil you can see uh, magnetizing coil 
so you have you can see in fact you can see four magnetizing coils they are it's visible in the form of drums okay you can see that so that magnetizing coil is there so inside the magnetizing coils you can see the projected strips at both ends so strips are there and their size are uh, their uh, size of that strip is also uh, specified that they are 0.25 meter long and 50 to 60 mm wide so these um, strips are built up in four stacks so you have four magnetizing coils so inside the four magnetizing coils you have um, what uh, strips made in the form of stacks and so since you have four magnetizing coils you have four stacks of uh, strips so these strips are projected projecting outside okay now the these strips are, are to be interconnected with the other strips which are projecting outside the magnetizing coil so that those connections are made by corner pieces so corner pieces are also made of the same material of that strips so whatever is the uh, material of the specimen of that strips so that's uh, the corner pieces also are made by uh, those materials and that interconnection is made by the cor corner strips you can see that so you can see clearly an overlap overlap uh, between the corner strips and uh, the iron strips there so that is one point and uh, then another thing you have to remember is that uh, inside the magnetizing coil what is that so magnetizing coil you have um, each drum of that magnetizing coil is having one uh, primary winding so uh, so in total you have four primary windings so those four primary windings are connected in series so that it becomes a single primary winding so you have uh, you can see four drums of magnetizing coil and inside that you have uh, that magnetizing coil is nothing but the primary winding so each primary winding so total in total there are four primary windings so uh, those are connected in series to form a single primary winding and that is why you can see that connections that is uh, one uh, two terminals coming outside so those two terminals are of the primary winding and uh, that uh, two terminals will include four uh, primary wind uh, four uh, individual primary windings connected in series okay now one thing it is not it, it cannot be shown uh, shown in that figure but thing is that there is each beneath each magnetizing coil you have two uh, two uh, secondary coils so i i just repeat again beneath in uh, the each magnetizing coil or beneath each drum drum you can see on that figure in that figure beneath that you have uh, two uh, secondary windings so each uh, coil beneath you can s find two secondary coils so, so likewise how many secondary coils will be there eight secondary coils will be there two into four is eight so eight secondary coils will be there so that how do how do you connect those secondary winners so you can have to connect you have to make the connections so these eight secondary coils have to be made into two groups so totally eight uh, secondary coils are there you have to make you have to divide those secondary coils in two uh, divide those into two groups so how do you make the two groups so four uh, so one group should contain four secondary coils so two groups each group is having four secondary coils so four four plus four eight so that is how uh, secondary coils are connected so uh, so each uh, group which consists of four secondary coils so what is the how do you pick that secondary coils i told that each magnet beneath each magnetizing coil there are uh, two secondary coils so one from each core is taken one coil from each core is taken so from the first magnetizing coil uh, one 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 secondary coil is taken for the second from the second magnetizing coil the second uh, the, that is one another one uh, secondary coil is likewise from the third another one secondary coil is connected uh, taken likewise from the last one another secondary coil is taken so these selected or taken secondary coils are connected in series so that it becomes uh, the first secondary coil that is marked as s uh, okay you can you can see that that is marked as s1 in the circuit diagram you can see that is s1 and similarly you are connecting the remaining four from which each one uh, each one is <coughs> is taken from each core and they are connected in series so that it becomes s2 so likewise you divide eight number of secondary coils 
in the in the, in the groups of two and the groups of four likewise how many groups of four are there two groups of four are four uh, are there and uh, uh, so how do you connect that that is uh, each coil belong to each core so that uh, you you take four different um, coils each from uh, each from each core and then you connect in series so that it becomes uh, a secondary winding okay and that is four se uh, different secondary windings connected in series likewise you will be having s1 as well as s2 okay i think it is very clear okay and then so these are the uh, things you have to and one more thing why it is called a square why this is called a square so magnetizing coil uh, inside you have the specimen that is the iron specimen made in the form of strips they are projecting outside interconnecting them you have uh, what perpendicularly bent uh, corner pieces made of the same material so you can see that the complete thing is a magnetic circuit and that complete magnetic circuit in the, is in the form of a square so that is why it is called a, a square and it is named after its uh, its uh, founder that is the Lloyd and Fisher okay and uh, that is all about the, uh, the the description of Lloyd Fisher square so the Lloyd Fisher square is is actually the specimen itself so that specimen is made up of a closed is made in, in the form of a square so that it becomes a closed magnetic circuit after all circuit means the closed path you have uh, seen uh, two types of circuits that is electric circuit as well as magnetic circuit so in electric circuit current flows likewise magnetic circuit magnetic flux flows so for the magnetic flux to flow you need a closed path and that is why we called it as a magnetic circuit okay now you can see the test setup so everything whatever we have described in that Lloyd Fisher square are evident here uh, it is shown as a circuit okay so that you can easily understand so whatever you see as a square is the specimen itself that is the strips or sheets okay and i told about one one primary winding that is each magnetizing coil is having uh, a primary winding they are connected in series to form a single primary winding and that is shown there and this single primary winding is fed from a uh, sinusoidal voltage supply and you have a controlling switch there and in case of uh, if you want to adjust that sinusoidal voltage you need to adjust that or fine tune that adjust that voltage because that is required I, I'll tell that in a little bit later so for that for adjustment of that voltage uh, you need an auto transformer so an auto transformer fine tunes that voltage the thing is that see for things to happen you should circle you should have the proper flux density okay so for for why proper flux density because that flux density will be circulating the magnetizing current so you require proper magnetizing you have to circulate proper magnetizing current in proper strength and that is why and that is selected by adjusting the voltage <coughs> so that adjustment of that voltage is done by the auto transformer there <coughs> so that auto transformer output is uh, given to the primary winding and you have the ammeter also in between and then you have the watt meter so watt meter obviously we know it has two coils that is one is current coil and another is a secondary coil and the current coil is in the primary circuit itself okay there is a line which i have drawn in mistake okay i have cancelled that so that line is not there okay so that current coil is supplied from the primary winding itself <coughs> so the whatever is the current flowing through the primary winding will also flow through the current coil of the watt meter and the pressure coil of the watt meter is actually uh connected across the se uh, the first secondary winding okay that is s1 okay and then you have remaining one more secondary winding that is s2 uh, which is connected across uh, so at the a, an electrostatic voltmeter or even you can have an electrodynamo type voltmeter and that is connected across the uh, the second secondary winding s2 okay and uh, <clears throat> i'll explain in a later video what is electrostatic voltmeter electrostatic voltmeter they are typical voltmeters especially they are used in uh, high voltage measurements okay so that is why uh, we are using that i'll explain that in a later video what is electrostatic voltmeter okay so that is connected across s2 and the square itself is the strips or sheet or the specimen okay and then you have to uh, adjust apply the uh, voltage across a primary winding and um, uh, it is adjusted till the magnetizing current 
uh, is is having is circulated a typical value of uh, magnetizing current or the required magnetizing current is circulated until then you have to adjust the voltage and uh, so that that magnetizing current will 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 actually uh, <coughs> give the required value for bm what is bm bm is the maximum value of flux density the wattmeter and voltmeter readings are observed and then whatever is the induced voltage in s2 which is recorded by the voltmeter is given by e e is nothing but uh, 4.44 uh, it's similar equation of that of a transformer if you don't if you have if you haven't learned this equation just by heart it that is all because in a later stage you will learn that so this is a very famous equation even after completion of after many years of completion of btec you may not uh, forget that such a famous equation 4.44 uh, phi uh, phi m that is a maximum flux a frequency f and number of turns uh, n2 of the secondary winding that is so instead of phi m uh, I, I can write it as uh, BM BM uh, BM prime AS BM prime AS why earlier I have, ex I have introduced a term BM that is a maximum uh, flux density now why it is BM prime so BM prime means that see Oh, that is the observed flux density okay actual flux density will be something else so actual flux density is bm that is a maximum actual flux density uh, this is the observed magnetic um, um, observed magnetic flux density that is an apparent one okay the total one okay in that the the, the used flux density or the useful flux density will be something else that is bm so we have learned about true power uh, imaginary power and apparent power okay true power is the power which is actually being used but apparent power is also very important so a bm prime is the apparent power uh, apparent flux density or the total flux density i hope it is very clear so why it is uh, why it is written as b into a because phi is uh, phi is nothing but b into a or uh, b is equal to phi by a from that we have written in such a form that is instead of phi m you have apparent maximum flux density bm prime multiplied by as so what is as it's a cross sectional area of the specimen in uh, mm square or meter square then you have frequency in hertz okay so from that what is bm uh, prime or the apparent maximum flux density that is equal to e by 4.44 as f n2 now how, how do you get the actual required flux density actual flux density so that is b so uh, we know i told that um, uh, that is what is the observed value of flux see flux can see iron is the iron path is the authorized path for the flux to flow that is the authorized or the actual path we have defined for the magnetic flux but magnetic flux can find some other path also because the air surrounding that is also a path for magnetic flux air is also a good conductor for magnetic flux so wherever you have air you cannot block the air you can you can expect leakage flux so actual so the total flux may be the actual flux plus plus the leakage flux that is what i have written there absurd value of flux is that that is a total flux is nothing but the true value of flux in the specimen that is the flux flowing through that specimen plus flux in the air space between specimen and magnetizing coil i told that uh, you are inserting the specimen in the form of strips inside the magnetizing coil so you can expect an air gap between strip and the magnetizing coil so that air gap through that air gap you can expect flux to pass because that air is also a conductor for flux so total flux is nothing but the flux passing through the coil you can ex you can have two parallel path uh, so that is uh, for mag magnetic flux also you can have parallel path one through the specimen and uh, the other through the air gap between magnetizing coil and the specimen so even in parallel circuit in electric electric parallel circuit the current get divided and you, you if you find if you want to find the total current you simply add so the same case you can apply here also you have two parallel path one is the specimen the other is uh, the the air, the air gap between magnetizing coil and the specimen so uh, the total flux is the sum of those fluxes okay so we just uh, define that by the uh, equation there so that is so the observed value that is the apparent flux density bm prime into as as is nothing but the area of cross section of what uh, area of cross section of the magnetizing uh, area of cross section of the specimen and uh, that is equal to uh, bm into as that is the true value of 
flux plus mu naught into h mu naught into h into uh, that is mu naught into h will give the uh, magnetic flux density then you have to multiply that with area so what is that cross sectional area the total area that is the area of the cross section of the magnetizing coil minus the area of cross section of the specimen so remaining area will be the area occupied by the air that is why there is ac minus as okay so and uh, from there you can find uh, if you divide throughout by as you'll get it as uh, bm prime equal to bm plus uh, mu naught into h by h uh, then ac minus as the whole divided by as so ac minus as will be there minus one will be there okay from that you can find what is bm that that is the true value of flux density that is bm is equal to bm prime minus mu naught h into ac by as minus one okay so this is how you find the required or the true value of magnetic flux density so if you find the true value of magnetic flux density then it is very easy to find the ion losses okay so because everything depends on the maximum or the true value of flux density okay so thank you